this one was actually a little bit hard for me to figure out where exactly the pathology was. <laughs> so on this one, oh, it's almost like blood. You can see there, extravasated RBCs. Um, you know, look like there may be some pathology in the fat. Um, but on the next one, to the, the specimen to the left, it was actually more clear to me. Um, Yeah, there's like yeah. there's definitely fibrosis and sclerosis of the the fibrous septa in between the fat lobules, right? So, right. but otherwise, it's hard to know why that's happening until we find. Yeah, then we see this one blood vessel in the deep fat there, which um, has like these needle shaped crystals, um, and um, if it was just in the adipocytes, I would have, I was thinking like, oh, this looks like subcutaneous fat necrosis of the newborn. Good but point. It, this is inside the vessel, so I think this is good for um, oxalosis. Very good. So you get these refractile crystals, and when you uh, use a polarizer, they have this like rainbow pattern of biofringence. It's very, very beautiful to look at. Um, I don't think I've ever diagnosed a case of this in real life. I've just seen it. I've, other people I've worked with have diagnosed, but I've never had one come across my scope where I've recognized it up front that I know of. And so what kind of situations can cause cutaneous oxalosis? So probably most commonly it's secondary oxalosis, which would be like um, seen with renal disease or like ethylene glycol poisoning. Good. Um, that kind of stuff. And then uh, there's also a genetic condition with autosomal recessive uh, where you produce more um, oxalate in the serum. Excellent. So yes, the patients need further workup. I, I always think of it as like ethylene glycol or antifreeze, you know, poisoning, um, uh, either intentional or accidental. Um, but <clears throat> but yeah, there are other conditions as well. So let me see. I think I've got an example here that is better that you will enjoy. So see, did I disappoint? This is the best ever, right? Look at that. It's amazing. And they kind of have like a florette like appearance here to me um and so i took many many pictures it's hard to get pictures of polarized light exam it depends how you adjust the the light uh, and the polarizer that's what it looked like here on h and &E. these kind of they're like radial arrays of kind of chunky needle shaped crystals even though we say needle shape they don't look really like gout to me at all uh the the way they're arranged together doesn't look like gout and uh also they, as far as I know, they survive the pro normal H&E uh, staining process, and gout is usually mostly dissolved during that process. So those are nice examples. There's the H&E. This one, like I said, had just tons and tons of oxalate, and I can't remember what the clinical scenario was here. And there was extensive um, uh, inflammation in the background skin, but this was uh, through a, a teaching slide exchange that I was in that I got, so I don't remember what the clinical was. So there's a oxalosis, and here's a, a more subtle example.